Hello there folks, I hope you're all doing well. First things first, we're going to create a copy of a multiplayer map to use as a testing ground to learn the ins and outs of modding. To do this, copy the scenario tag of a map of your choosing. For what we'll be learning in this series, I suggest you use a map with plenty of room and both indoor and outdoor spaces. You can find the multiplayer map scenarios at Tags, Levels, Test. Once you have a copy of a scenario, go back to the Levels folder and create a new folder called Tutorials. Within this folder, create a folder and give it a name, such as My Test Map. Within this new folder, paste your copied map and name it. To keep things simple, I suggest giving it the same name as the map folder. In this series, we're going to turn this blank map into a very simple single player mission, using assets found in the Combat Evolved tags. I will be using Danger Canyon, but you should be able to follow along with any other map of your choosing. Start up Sapien and open the scenario you just made. We need to make sure that your scenario is set to solo. CE's campaign and multiplayer modes use a different type of netcode to sync up objects, scripts, events and players. The two modes also have different settings and rules, such as the multiplayer having a limit of 16 players, whereas the campaign has a limit of 2. If you try to play a single player map that has been defined as a multiplayer map, things will quickly go wrong and won't work correctly. To set your level as a solo map, click on the mission folder in the hierarchy view window. Once selected, go to the properties window and set type to solo. Next, we will delete all of the unneeded multiplayer stuff like spawns, flag points and item collections. You can do this by going to the hierarchy list, selecting all of the objects you don't need and pressing the delete key. Clear out the following folders. Objects, units, vehicles, player starting points, game data, net game flags and net game equipment. Once the unneeded stuff has been removed, save the map, close and reopen Sapien to be safe and you're good to go. The first thing we're going to place down in our new map is a starting position for our two players. As mentioned earlier, there can be up to two players in co-op mode, so you will only need two spawn points. Place the two spawn points by selecting the Player Starting Points folder in the hierarchy window, and then right click where you would like to place the two spawn points in the game window. Once you have placed the two points, you can move them around by left clicking and dragging the pink diamond that represents where the spawn point is located. You can select multiple objects by holding the left mouse button and dragging the mouse to draw a box around the objects you want to select, and then click and drag the pink diamond of one of the objects that you've selected to move the entire selection. We now have our two spawn locations for our players. Player 1 will spawn at 0.scenarioplayersblock and player 2 will spawn at 1.scenarioplayersblock. Something to remember with Halo modding is that most things follow the computing rule of starting from 0. In case you don't know, in computer science, numbers start from 0 because it is the lowest unsigned number, and as far as a computer index cares, it is therefore the first. The second number will then be 1, the third 2, the fourth 3, and so on. If you come across a list of objects in any of the Halo modding tools, chances are that it will start from 0. Next, we're going to spawn some friendly marines to assist the players on their mission. Click on the small plus box next to the AI folder, and click on the Encounters folder. Then, press the new instance button. This will create an instance of an encounter. An encounter, in CE terms, is used to create a group of AI that the players will meet on their adventures. They can be used to split the level into different combat areas and help to organise the number of AI currently active on the level. Encounters tell the AI within it which team they are on, how to search for enemies, and things such as if they are created when the level boots for the first time. We're going to call this encounter something sensible, so that we know what this encounter is used for. In this case, friendly guards. Then, we're going to go down to the team index dropbox and set this encounter to 2 slash human. The AI attached to this encounter are now on the human team. We now need to click on the squads folder within our friendly guards encounter folder. Press the new instance button and we have just created a squad within our encounter. Squads are used to split a big encounter into smaller groups that can be given their own commands to follow, their own firing points to use and their own spawn points to spawn at. Click on the newly created squad, go to the properties palette window and name the squad Marines. We will then go to the edit types button in the hierarchy window. In the new pop-up window, go to the dropbox under objects class and select actor variant. Remember the different palettes I mentioned in the last tutorial? Actor variants also have their own palette. At the moment we don't have any actor variants, so in order to add some we'll click on the add button and find the tags folder in the file explorer. Look for characters Marine Armoured and then double click on the marine armored assault rifle.actor variant file and then the marine armored shotgun major.actor variant file you should now see our two actor variants in the bottom left of the window in the tag box 
This means that the variants have been successfully added to the scenario's palette. Press done to close the window and close the dialog box. Back in our squads folder, click on the Marines item. In the properties palette window, set their actor type to assault rifle marine armored. Because we want our marines to protect the player spawn area, set their initial and return states to guarding at guard position. Scroll down to find the seven white boxes labeled attacking, attacking search, and so on. In each of these boxes, enter a capital A. I will explain why in a moment. Next, set the normal diff count and insane diff count to five. This tells the squad how many characters it needs to spawn. Again, I will explain why in a moment. Then, click on the folder starting locations. Go to the game window and right click where you would like to spawn a marine. Do this another four times so that you have five spawn points for our five marines. These spawn points will create an AI character and give the character the properties that you chose in the marine squad. In this case, these spawns will create an armoured marine that wields an assault rifle, who is set to patrol and guard a number of positions. However, if you click on one of the spawn points, you will see that you can overwrite the squad's default properties on that particular spawn point. Click on one of the positions and set the actor type to Marine Armoured Shotgun Major. This one spawn point will now create a Marine Sergeant that wields a shotgun, instead of a regular Marine. Another thing you can do with the spawn point is set it to required. This tells the spawn point to be prioritised when the engine spawns in a squad of characters. For example, if you had 7 spawn points but the squad has been told to only spawn 5 characters, it will pick a spawn point at random. Now that you have told the engine that this spawn point is required, the engine will go to this spawn point first before randomly picking which of the other characters will be spawned. You can use this to randomise encounters so that no one playthrough of a mission will be the same, while keeping specific characters that you may want to always appear. Now that we have some AI set to spawn, we'll open up Tag Test to make sure that the spawns work correctly. Open the command prompt with the at or tilde key and enter map underscore name levels slash tutorials slash my test map slash my test map and the mission will load. Oh dear, our marine allies are shooting at us. This is because we haven't created an allegiance between the player and the humans. Remember the team index from earlier? Players are assigned to team 1, player. In order to prevent the marines from shooting at us, we can use this command in the command prompt. AI underscore allegiance, player, human. Our allies are now friendly towards us, but players will not be able to use this command when playing our missions. In order to make our mission work, we need to make a basic script. In our Halo CE mod tool folder, go to the following folder, data slash levels. In here, create a new folder called tutorials, and within that folder, a new folder named my test map. Within this folder, create one more folder named scripts. When a scenario is compiled into a playable map, the engine will check this folder location for any scripts to be included in the mission. Within the scripts folder, create a new text document and name it mission underscore script dot hsc. This will create a script file, which is used by the engine to perform the tasks and instructions that you will write in this file. You can name this script anything you like, but again, it is best to keep the name sensible and easy to understand. Open mission underscore script dot hsc and enter the following. Open bracket, script, startup, set marines friendly, open bracket, AI underscore allegiance, player human, close bracket, close bracket. This basic script tells the engine that, upon mission startup, to carry out the instructions within it. In this case, the command forms an allegiance between the player team and the human team. Yet again, it is best to give scripts a name that makes sense and explains what it does. We will go over scripts in more detail in a later video. Save the script, go to Sapien and click File Compile Scripts. If the script is understood by the engine and has no syntax mistakes, you will see the message Script Successfully Compiled appear in the bottom left. If an error appears, go back to the script file and double check for any spelling mistakes or a missed bracket somewhere. We can now return to tag test and enter the map name command to reload the map. Upon reloading the map, we will find that the marines are now friendly towards us. Congratulations! We will now make some enemies for us to shoot at to make the level a little more interesting. Once again, we'll be going to the encounter folder and creating a new encounter. We shall name this encounter Cov Ambush and set its team to 3 Covenant. Then, within Cov Ambush, we'll create two new squads and call them Squad 1 and Squad 2. Go to Edit Types and add some more enemies to the actor palette. This time, we'll be adding the Elite Miner, Grunt Miner and Jackal Miner actor variants. In the event that you add the wrong type of actor or object to a palette, make sure that you do not have any instances of the object on the level. 
Removing something from a palette while there are still instances of the object on the level can cause Sapien or the game to crash. This is because the game is attempting to load an instance of an unloaded entity, and you will need to delete the instances via Gorilla or revert to a previous backup of your scenario to fix this problem. Speaking of backups, make sure you back up your scenario on a regular basis, especially after you have made any major changes. Things can easily go wrong while creating a level, and there is no way to undo or redo changes. Outside of Sapien, there is also the rare possibility of data corruption or damage to hardware, so it is best to prepare for unforeseen consequences. Place down some spawn points in Squad 1 a little way away from the player spawn position, and some spawn points in Squad 2 a little further back from Squad 1. Allocate some enemies to the positions. I suggest giving Squad 1 an Elite and 3 Grunts, and Squad 2 can have an Elite, 3 Jackals and 3 Grunts. Remember to tell the squad how many characters it needs to spawn. You might be thinking that 3 Grunts in Squad 2 is a bit much, but I'm going to show you something. Remember the normal and insane counts from earlier? This determines how many characters will spawn in a squad on the different difficulties. On easy and normal, a squad will place down the normal diff count. On legendary difficulty, the squad will spawn the insane diff count. And on heroic, the squad will spawn a number of enemies midway between the norm and insane counts. For example, squad 2 will spawn 5 enemies on easy and normal, 7 on legendary, and 6 on heroic. We will now create some firing positions for the baddies. Seeing that their only purpose will be to attack the marines, all of the firing positions will need to be moving towards the marine spawn points. Click on the firing positions folder and right click in the game window. You have now created a firing position, which an AI will use to act as a point of reference in the world, and will commonly use to stand on or move between when firing their weapon or navigating the environment. You will now see a red box with the letter A next to it, both in the game and the properties window. Remember those seven boxes that we filled in with the letter A? Those tell a squad which firing positions to use for certain actions. For example, our marines from earlier have been told to guard at a guard position. If they have been told to guard positions labelled with A, they will patrol these points whenever they are not in combat, and search B and C positions when they are actively searching for enemies, before returning to guard duty if they cannot find anything else to shoot at. Seeing that the Covenant are attacking the player spawn and the marine spawn points, we can set all of their attack positions to A but we can also tell the Covenant to retreat if they lose too many units. We can do this by creating a platoon within the Cov Ambush Encounter. Create the platoon and call it Attack Force. Set Change Attacking Defending to less than 50% Strength and set Happens to Attack Force. This means that when the platoon is less than half as strong as it was when it was at full capacity, the units within the platoon will switch from an attack state to a defensive state. Go back to Squad 1 and Squad 2 and put them in the Attack Force Platoon. Then, in the boxes where it says Defending, set these to B. Place a number of firing positions for Cov Ambush with the positions marked as A around the player spawn and positions marked as B further back where you would like them to retreat to. We will also make some firing positions for our Marine friends so that they can move around while they are fending off the incoming Covenant attack. Create some A positions so that they have somewhere to patrol, some B positions in the direction of the attackers so that they can defend the area, and then some C positions around where the Covenant are retreating to so that they can search for any Kobe survivors after the ambush. We will then tell the Marine squad to use the B and C firing positions. The Marine positions should now look like this. Attacking set to A and B, Attacking search set to B and C, Attacking guard set to A. If we now return to Tag Test and reload our map, we'll find a few enemies waiting for us. When you attack them, you should find that the Covenant will retreat to a defensive position when a number of them have been killed. This is where we will finish today's tutorial. To keep you all busy until the next tutorial, I have two challenges for you. For the first challenge, I'd like you to make the Marines retreat to a defensive position of their own when their numbers are reduced. For the second, I'd like you to give the friendly guards a marksman. This marksman will be equipped with a sniper rifle. When the marines are on guard, this marksman will join them on their patrols and hang around the main group. However, when the marines spot the Covenant ambush, this marksman will fall back to a better position while the rest of the squad move in to face the Covenant head on. At the end of the next tutorial, I will show you how I would complete these challenges. We will also go over command lists, a powerful tool that we can use to make the AI follow scripted events and make them do much more than they are capable of. A big thank you to our first two patrons, ST Fan and Catch Exception. And a big thank you to you for watching this tutorial. Drop a like and subscribe if you think OJ Simpson did in fact do it. Consider supporting the Combat Eclipse project on Patreon and have a nice day.